I know I said this way too many times on here, but Donut is my favorite nut. My tendency of diving headfirst into any glaze or cream filled situation led me to the discovery of a few exceptional donut spots in the city. Today, let's go out and try them out, and when we come back, let's learn a few recipes together. Are you excited? So excited! So, guess what's the name of this place? I'm about to ask Jamie to pull that up because it's called Bear Donuts. I think they have multiple locations on the island, but this is the one in K-Town. Seems like they do a variety of donut types. These are all mochi nut, I think. Different flavors and shapes. And then these are classic brioche with fillings and stuff. This one's really dark, which I desire. Definitely getting it. Oh, I also read an article online about this toasted coconut one being extraordinary. The vibe of this place kind of reminds me of the children's section of Barnes & Noble. Uh, so pretty creepy. They got their merch over here too. By the way, I have merch and some new ones are coming soon. I guess I'm going to sit over here and enjoy the nuts. Do you like this angle? A little point of view action going on. Fun fact, POV is my favorite way to consume content on all websites. Now I'm starting to remember why I stopped doing food tours. It's so awkward that I'm starting to feel cold in my sweater. I'll never tell you guys how I'm filming this POV. I'm just glad there isn't a second camera filming my embarrassing moment. Let's start by trying this pink one. This is a classic mochi donut with a pink chocolate glaze. Out of all the mochi nut I've seen online, they're all in this circle of ball shape. I wonder why that is, but first let's give it a taste and to 113. Damn. The texture is soft and chewy, and you feel like you're getting something fruity, and then bam, chocolate in the mouth. What a pleasant surprise. 8.8 .8 out of 10. Next up with their famous four, toasted coconut mochi donut. Wow, my first and second favorite nut in one. I can see why people have been talking about this. Very light and has that deep, creamy coconut flavor. I'm giving it a 9.3. This one's a brioche and strawberry cream. Reminds me of my last weekend because it's overflowing with cream. Looking at the color of the surface, I think they left it in the fryer for too long. It's very light and refreshing, but it's not something I'm used to. I don't think donut and whipped cream belong together. I'd much rather have chocolate or just straight up jam. So 6.5 out of 10. Last but not least, this is called the Dirty Chocolate. The appearance and the name is extremely appealing. I think it's filled on the inside too. It's always nice to have double chocolate going on. Having a hard time locating the insertion hole, so I think we can just bite down anywhere. Definitely the heaviest of the four. It's always sad when I completely miss the cream. The brioche is a little crumbly, and the thick layer of chocolate just dominated in my mouth. And it's even sadder to see whipped cream with cocoa powder inside. Where's the custard, yo? So to give you a quick recap, best one, definitely the mochi toasted coconut. Very chewy good texture and the coconut flavor is insane. I also really like this pink one too. Again, for the texture and the chocolate on top. I kind of wish that the coconut one is also in this ball shape. It's just way more fun. Maybe we can mix them ourselves later. Our next place is called Doe. It used to be my favorite donut shop in the city. As you can tell, they have that old school charm to them. Simple design with stacks of coffee cups by the machine and trays of donuts by the dozen. I think they only do classic brioche and a few cake donuts here and there. The simple sugar glaze here is the best one I've ever had. But today I think I'm gonna try the Nutella and Boston cream. I ended up going with the blueberry lemon with the oat crumble on top. They don't have a bathroom here, so I'm acting less of a savage and cutting it in small pieces. It's really thick. It kind of looks like the cross section of the piece of cake. Let's give it a taste and rate it 113. Damn. Looks can be deceiving. The texture is actually very airy and light, and with the massive size, it makes it way more satisfying. That's what I love about their sugar glaze. Simple flavor, and everything is in that soft and airy texture. Let's move on to the Boston Cream Donut, aka the American Deep Fried Eclair. This next shot is so satisfying, I think we need some music. It is heavy and we all know why. Let's give it a taste and rate it 113. The custard tastes very fresh and real, unlike the Dunkin' Donut plastic white goo thing. Chocolate is bittersweet, perfectly balanced with the custard. The magic is still in the donut itself. It's the perfect brioche. They really have mastered the dough. Is that why it's named that? It's starting to rain, so let's get going. Our next bakery is called Mazdar. What does that even mean, you ask? Well, in the sub-Indian continent language, 
Urdu, Mazadar means the magical essence that breathes life into everything, which is why the bakery refers itself as a delectable journey of mystery and desire. Sounds like somebody's going through a goth phase. The chef owner has family origin from Pakistan, but everything here seems super French for some reason. That's good because every chef should have the artistic freedom to express themselves through cooking beyond their ethnic cuisine. I feel like that's the foundation of most culinary innovation in the world. Look at this donut hole. This is what we here for. Would you ever pay $5.75 for a donut? I really appreciate how they put the tin bit on top of the ring, because the hole is supposed to be filled. The shape kind of reminds me of one of those traditional Sicilian breakfast brioche that you dip in granita. You might assume that this is just an ordinary donut dusted with sugar, but if you split it open and look inside, you'll realize that it's filled with custard. They not only give you the nice donut ring shape, but also provide you with the satisfaction of a cream fill, which I'm about to experience. So I'd like to proudly announce that this is officially my favorite donut in the city. It's not only light and airy, it also has that bread pull apart texture that you get from a milk bun. The custard has real vanilla bean in it and is filled throughout the donut. Super satisfying. 9.7 out of 10. Our last stop today is called Daily Provision. It's like the cover front for Danny Meyer's Restaurant Empire. The only thing I like here are their crullers. So much better than Tim Hortons. The rain's supposed to be getting worse, so let's grab it real quick and go home. I know some of you are shocked right now. Oh my god, he's wearing pants. So guess what? I've been wearing pants for the past couple videos. Some major character growth coming for 2022. Every time I walk by a Daily Provision, I always get one of these crullers. This one is maple cream. I made it for a short video a while ago too. I wonder if they also beat it on the couch. This thing is light as air and it's crispy on the outside, super moist on the inside. The only way to describe it is kind of like if a churro, croissant, and donut had a threesome. There's no filling on the inside but it's so soft and creamy that you sometimes feel like you're eating a lightly baked custard. I know we did a bottom face reveal a while ago so how about this time we'll do a view from directly above. I need to pick up some crumbs off the floor. Final recap of the day. Favorite donut of the entire city, this brioche one from Mazadar. Very immediate second being the Boston cream from Dough. Number three and the most unique, the maple cruller from Daily Provision. Not a big fan of bear donuts, just cause I don't really like mochi. But if you're a fan of the chewy texture, this is probably the best you're gonna get. Now I think it's time to start trying out some donut recipes, especially after I just blew a big load of money. First being a brioche filled donut from Claire Saffitz. A lot of you in the comments been telling me that she's the best baker around, so let's check this recipe out. 4 cups of flour, a teaspoon of yeast, I'm not gonna bloom it cause sometimes you just gotta have faith, a teaspoon of salt, quarter cup of sugar. Like my fork all together, we'll move on to the wet ingredients. Also remember to take a block of butter out so it comes to room temperature. Quarter cups of milk and 6 eggs. I'm gonna start whisking with the ligma fork from the center out, just like how we make pasta. After it comes together to a dough, you wanna knead it for 10 minutes. After 5 minutes, I realize our dough is way too wet. But you guys know that I'm against fixing or going back on recipes, so I'm just gonna roll with it. Now with my organic stand mixer, I'll slowly mix this block of butter into this dough, I mean sticky mess. Just push a small piece of butter into it and keep rubbing it. You can rub it on the couch if you want. After all the butter is in, we'll put it on the countertop, dust with some flour, and then we'll start stretching and shaping it into a more legitimate looking dough. What Claire did in her video is this push and scoop motion. She said this way is not only going to stretch the gluten development in the dough, but also make the surface very smooth to perfectly set it up for proofing. Check out this awesome transition. Did you like that? Rate it 1 through 10 in the comments. Now we'll cover it and let it rest for 4 hours. While we waited, I cut out these parchment paper squares. They're gonna be used to hold each individual piece. When it's pretty much doubled in size, we can dump it out. It's still kinda looking like poorly made slime, so I start to wonder, what is it supposed to look like? When I went back to the original video, I saw this. It's a tiny bit different, one might say. I'm gonna fold it a few times so it gets more firm and start cutting. I feel like no matter how soft the dough is, once it goes into the fryer, it's gonna look the same. I'm using a cookie cutter here, but you can use a wine glass. They look kinda depressed. Once they're out, we'll transfer them to the parchment sheets, cover it, and rest for another hour. You can see they puffed up a lot, especially the size where the cutter went through. We'll heat a pot of oil to 350 and start frying them. Try not to splatter yourself like this. The only thing I can think about is how we added a whole block of butter and now deep frying them in oil. So there's no way it doesn't taste good. We're gonna do 3 minutes on each side. You want to maintain the oil temperature at 350. If it gets too hot, it's gonna look like this. No need to worry, you guys already know that I like it the darker the better. To test if it's done, you just need to knock it and if it sounds hollow, it's done.
So that sounded pretty hollow. All right, since this batch is a little browner than we expected, we'll just use it as the chocolate batch. This time I turned down the heat so the color is looking much better. Let's use these ones as jelly filled and we're gonna toss them in some sugar. You can add cinnamon or cardamom if you want. I'm just using plain sugar because I don't have anything else. And then we'll just repeat the same steps for the rest of the donuts. We'll let them cool off for now till I can touch them. I think we should do Nutella and strawberry jam. As you can tell, I even went out and got the proper piping equipment for this recipe. I already had the bag, so it's just the tip, as usual. So we'll do a batch of strawberry and a batch of Nutella. Well, not a real Nutella, this off-brand Target stuff. What I like to do before piping is to prepare the hole by stabbing it with the knife so we can make room for the jam. And start filling it till we can't anymore. We gotta make the insertion hole visible for people to bite. It looks kind of German. And the same thing for the chocolate. You see, I purposely overcooked them so you can tell the darker one is the Nutella and the lighter one is the jam. Definitely didn't forget to turn down the heat or anything. Trust me, bro. Now with two plates ready, let's start with the fruity one. It's very heavy and it feels kind of warm on the inside too. Now let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. Also giving you guys an advanced emotional warning. Predictable outcome, crispy on the outside, soft and warm on the inside. The dough is kind of stretchy too. Look how it's pulling apart like a piece of brioche bread. And the jam is sugar, you know, so it's always good. Overall, I'm gonna give it an 8.7 out of 10. Just a tiny bit crumbly. This one's about to be really satisfying. I feel really guilty eating this. Well, it's pretty much the same thing with chocolate on the inside. And since we overcooked the dough, the outside is a little more crispy and the inside is a tiny bit undercooked. So I discovered my brand new interest, uh, medium rare donuts. I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. So remember how our favorite from the first place is this toasted coconut mochi nut because it has a double nut in the name and also it has great flavors. So let's attempt to recreate at home with some mochi flour and tapioca starch. So I'm starting with 75 grams of milk and half an egg. This is a half recipe, the full one will be in the description. 12 grams of vegetable shortening, I'm just using butter here. And then we'll sift in 75 grams of glutinous rice flour, 60 grams of tapioca starch, a key bump of baking powder, and a pinch of salt. Finally, 40 grams of sugar. This is gluten free, so it's gonna look more like a batter than a dough. Once it comes together, we'll put it in a piping bag and try to pipe out a circle of balls. And since mochi doesn't really hold its shape, we need the support of this parchment paper underneath. It's extremely starchy, a lot harder to pipe than I expected. We just need to make sure everything's connected, otherwise it's gonna fall apart in the oil. Not the most even looking balls, but we can move on to the stove now. We're gonna drop the entire thing along with the paper into the pot. We'll fry it for about a minute or so to let it solidify, and then we can take the paper out. Mochi doesn't need to be cooked, so at this point it's just the color thing. Thing. You can take it out whenever you want. After two minutes on each side, this is what they look like. I'm gonna stop here and let them cool. While the oil is draining, we'll make a simple vanilla glaze, consisting of a cup of powdered sugar, a splash of vanilla, and 48 grams of milk. Bring it all together till it has the consistency of, um, um, don't get it started in the comments. Now we'll just take the cold donut, dip in the icing, and we're done. I thought mochi nut is going to be harder to make than normal donuts, but this is so simple. And just by touching it, I can feel the over-the-top crispiness that's about to come through. Now finally, let's give it a taste and rate 1 through 10. It tastes as good as it sounds. I haven't been this surprised by a glazed nut in a long time. It's even better than the original coconut. Wait, where's the coconut? It even has better texture than the original coconut mochi nut. The crust is not only crispy, but also light as air and juicy for some reason. Also check out this crunch. And the inside is soft and chewy. It's almost like cheese. Look how it's pulling apart like that. It really takes your mouth for a ride here. I think this is one of the best desserts I've ever made on this channel. I can't believe how simple it is. I'm gonna give it a high score of 9.7 out of 10. As I said before, I'll link the recipe in the description. And I really hope you get to try this. And my PO box is still open. I look forward to being pen pals with some of you. But that's it for this week. Alright, thank you.